all the programs are gone. That is the first thing. What else? Thank you. Thank you, Jan. दुश्मन को देखा है तो जाए वाटर वोट सा किया वेलकम डॉक्टर पूर्वी Welcome to Purbi. Purbi is a Purbi is joined. Now we are waiting for Usman and Muhammad Ali and Katoj. Otherwise, we'll start in two three minutes. There we are already. Who joined? Doctor Borua, you are from. You are from. Right? Doctor Borua, Borua, Borua. I'm from Assam. Yes. Ah, bata do in me. The land of promise is Bodhua. Assam. The land of promise is Bodhua. In the old, very old, legendary, legendary figure as an actor. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yes. Where is there? Jiji, show minimal space sometimes. I don't see minimal space at all. Please show, show your daughter's face. I want to see her. Minimal, oh. minimal, minimal. Minimal is joined. Already joined. Minimal. Minimal is already joined. Oh, okay, good. I say, oh my God. After such a lot of minimal, I can't think of dancing you now. <laughs> Just more minimal. Oh God. <laughs> Hey, where is Manski? Your elder sister, where is she? She is busy with advocate as an advocate. Manski? Okay, Manski is busy. Yes, I know she is. She is very busy with fighting cases. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. So, you know how you? Purvi has joined. Purvi has joined. Good, oh, good. Come in, sir. Yes. Good. 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 First time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know how is your tea business going on? Tea, your tea, coffee. All right, okay. I can see. Someone has joined. I think he is also going to join. Mukhtarli, uh, yeah. Welcome, Doctor Usman. Welcome. Yes. Sir. Welcome. Yes. Doctor Sharma, shall we start now? Yes, sir. We can start. Uh, we can start now. Okay, uh, friends. Uh, good evening. I welcome all of you to this interactive session on fourth industrial revolution and leadership, neuroscience and leadership, and leader as an entrepreneur. Uh, today, I am very happy to introduce uh, uh, three experts for this session. Uh, Vikas sir, you are. all know about him i will say a few words uh, about him then uh, we have uh, with us our great friend uh, rahul ji and uh, the third speaker would be uh, professor vidhi sharma uh, sanyal sir will speak on leader as an entre uh, entrepreneur yes sir rahul ji will talk on neuroscience and leadership and mm -hmm. professor jd sharma will speak on fourth industrial revolution and leadership so before i uh, request uh, uh, sanyal sir 
Uh, let me just uh, share few uh, sentences about him because otherwise <laughs> his achievements are so big that I am not able to and I am not competent enough to, you know, uh, uh, cite those things. Uh, uh, sir is an Indian educationist, director of the Foundation de la Mission in the, the site international. <laughs> My French is very poor <laughs> in Paris. And before assuming this office, he was special advisor to the UNESCO Director General and carried on as its advisor till uh, 2014. He served UNESCO International Institute for Educational Planning Paris for three decades. Uh, that's a real achievement that for such a long time, uh, we are very proud of you, sir. And he has also served as the vice chairperson of UNESCO International Institute for Capacity Building in Africa. Yes. Uh, sir is the recipient of highest civilian honor of France, Legion d'Honneur from the President of France and Parvasi Bhartiya Samman from the President of India. So that is a, uh, a rare feat, rare achievement. And uh, uh, sir has authored large number of books, reports and monographs. So thank you, sir, for uh, uh, joining us uh, and uh, uh, sharing your expert knowledge. So I will introduce uh, uh, Rahul ji and J.D. Sharma ji once their session starts uh, uh, properly. Now, may I request you, sir, to kindly uh, uh, share your thoughts with us on uh, how a leader can guide others as an entrepreneur. Over to you, sir. Shall I? Shall I start? Yes, please, sir. Okay. So, Dr. Sharma, thank you very much. But must tell you something. I must start with my highest appreciation for Dr. G. D. Sharma, with whom I am working since 1987. Together, back to back, <laughs> with his brilliant wife, Mizura Sharma. I know we miss very much. And Vidura uh, has been always with Didi and with us from the very beginning in Mandi. Didi, you remember when you went there in 1987 with Vidula to start your primary school project. <laughs> and since then, we have not separated. We two are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Didi, for keeping his dynamism and keeping me particularly active through your enthusiasm and initiative. I'm really grateful to you to keep me happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 85 now. I'm the king of all of you. After Srivastava left us. Srivastava was the older than me, two years older than me. But thank you very much, Didi, again, and thank you all of you for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to talk to, talk to you at this age. And I shall not go for long. Actually, I am giving myself another four or five years to work with you and I have to be having GD with me all the way through. Thank you very much. And let me tell you something about entrepreneurship skills. You know, entrepreneurship has become now an ever evolving subject. You know, the, the subject is evolving every time. Leadership is has to change over time because we are having going through a crisis in the world is lack of leadership, good leadership, and we are we have to really massify that skill among the within the whole country and in fact also in the larger society in the world. Now, what happens in entrepreneurship skills? Leadership starts with the let us say the system level. At the system level, the ministries of the government and in the departments and at all levels. And, the, and then in the institutional level, it's development purpose. And GD is very much expert on that and he knows me. I work on that institutional development and management for a long, long time. And here, Dr. Varghis and Dr. Uh, uh, John Jyot John, John, John also had joined me at our stay, stay on that. Vargas had been working with me as direct my training from 1981 and worse. Uh, and uh, I must tell you something that we, leadership will start at the system level and then at the ministries, at the departments of the different departments uh, and 
everybody has to be thinking of how to evolve with the contemporary time. Today, we are going through a crisis in the world, crisis of uh, leadership, and we are in a very serious condition that your leadership is becoming increasingly corrupt. That has to be now changed. We have to start with the ministries, ministers. They have to be oriented, and how to do that is a difficult job, but we have to tell them also that performance has become the most important factor now in all the ministries and departments and all the way through down, downwards. Then the, if you go, come to the institutional level, leadership starts at the head of the institution, department of institutions, and all the way through. We have to keep our eyes and ears open. What's going on around the world? What are the problems that we are facing today? How do we adjust our uh, program according to the needs of the society? The, okay. Now this is what uh, are the Critical points in our discussion and institutional level. Did you know that we have started a program called Income Guarantee Functions in 1993 onwards in Mauritius? And then from there, we started the program of entrepreneurship that comes out. Income Guarantee means how to institutions can become citizens, which is becoming more important now. And also, we must think that our performance is the best indicator of our work. And our system should be such that we shall have the objectives of the program very well defined, and our uh, content of the program is to be well defined, suited to the uh, situation that will be they have to be evolved. And then the the method of delivering the project is also to take care of all the new technologies, all the uh, current advancement in different ways of how to improve our uh, delivery system. And then we have to de develop a good performance indicator system so that we can have a good feedback and evaluation monitoring system. Always looking at what we are doing right, what we are doing wrong, so that we can improve upon it over time. You know, we have heard about this professional uh, <laughs> work, IAPQ work where he is trying to find out pockets where we are having weaknesses, identify them and work on them to develop them so that we can have a uniform system. And we must also attack the problems of inequality, problems of uh, which is getting increasingly wider because of the defense of the acceptance level of the people. You see, most of our people are not highly motivated in the sense they don't have, if you don't make them motivated towards Profit-oriented system, then people will not get interested. They must have something in return for the work that they will be doing. So that's why we have to make massify our skill development programs at all levels. So uh, 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 and we have to have a regular program of definition of objectives, what we want, and the content of the programs, the delivery methods and the structure of the system which will support the delivery and the content. And then we we'll go on making incentives for the uh, for the participants of the program. So I stop here now and give the floor to the others if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Vikas, because you have been very effectively managing the entrepreneurship program in IAP Paris. You have been training large number of persons in this area. Particularly, I know that uh, you have been a person who has uh, developed several leaders in the area of higher education. And that is an entrepreneurship. In a way, it's an entrepreneur, academic entrepreneurship. You can develop few more persons uh, 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 to become an uh, entrepreneur. We have two entrepreneurs in this group. One is Korobe, who is an educational entrepreneur, and there is another Katoj, Mr. Katoj, who is also an entrepreneur. Uh, in fact, uh, these days it is going to be, a, when the technology revolution is taking place, entrepreneurship will become very important aspect, because that is the way things would change, because many things would be taken care by automation. But here the entrepreneur would bring about what is required to be done for future. 
I think thank you very much for sharing your thoughts in a very brief manner. And I, I, I only suggested him that we can speak for 15-20 minutes so that we have the, uh, another presentation and we can have more discussions subsequently. So, uh, yeah. You know that I have the opportunity to work with seven, seven countries of the world. Yeah, I know, I know. I, other, other day I was uh, talking, I said I had only 20 countries then Professor uh, 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 Anand Krishnan said I have visited 70 countries. <laughs> when you said that I have visited 20, 50 countries. So then you know the whole world view, what the world is happening in the, uh, happening in the world. I think that's the kind of change which you are seeing and you see the people with the all world experience with you. That gives uh, how uh, development takes place uh, in the thought process. Development takes place in various uh, kind of uh, activities. So that is where you are going to uh, work it out. Now, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Sharma, we can invite uh, Dr. Rahulji for uh, sharing his ideas. Okay, sir. Uh, so, Sanyal, sir, thank you so much for these uh, wonderful insights on uh, leader as an entrepreneurship. Thank you so much. Friends, now I am very happy to introduce uh, Engineer Rahul Agarwalji. Uh, since I think it is uh, your first meeting with him, so I am very pleased to highlight some of his career achievements. Uh, he has been the Head of Technology and Operations at 3SR Consultancy, designed and created Digital Academy for Digital Transformation of Learning Programs Delivery. He has been involved with digitization of MSME clients and uh, worked with CDOT, HCL, Huget Software, Arisent, uh, Altron. Uh, overall, he has more than three decades of experience and his specialty is in technology creation and to end development of multiple new products in the sphere of uh, LTE, user terminals, GSM, uh, you know, the, uh, the communication systems. Uh, GPRS, GSM, Cloud RAN, uh, Femto, Mobile Satellite, Signaling Systems, Intelligent Networks, etc. He has been very instrumental in development of industry first uh, LTE to home product, the complete hardware and software development for Tier 1 OEM, and ecosystems involving chip vendors, contract manufacturers, uh, certification agencies. Uh, he has the credit to create a center of excellence for SDN, the Software Defined Network and NFV, the open stack, uh, creating new software assets like uh, on cloud management and uh, orchestran uh, uh, say, uh, framework. Uh, he has been involved in creating technology innovations also like multiple POCs uh, on like uh, cloud land. Uh, instant VPN, etc. And uh, he has worked with global industry leaders spread over geographies, like uh, J.D. Sharma sir was saying that he has been to many countries uh, like uh, Sanyal sir. So uh, he has uh, provided, uh, means engineer Rahulji has provided his expert technological uh, services to the industries in Finland, Germany, Italy, France, UK, USA, China, South Korea, Vietnam, and of course, uh, in our own beloved country in India. And uh, he has also uh, worked on providing software solutions to highly complex, large, and carrier grade systems in telecom space in complex ecosystems. So this is, and his association with corporate learning for more than two decades in various roles uh, has been a major, uh, you know, a motivation factor for him. Uh, by, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, academic credentials, uh, he is a Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Science from MNNIT in Allahabad. He got his B.Sc. from Allahabad University and a P.G. in Technology Management from AIMA. So, uh, with this, uh, I welcome you, uh, Engineer Rahulji, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. And now, may I request you to kindly uh, advise our friends on how the uh, neuroscience and leadership can play a major role in this domain. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, s
थैंक यू सो मच एंड ओवर टू यू थैंक यू वेरी मच शर्मा जी एंड थैंक यू प्रवल जी फॉर ज्वाइनिंग आई मे इन्फॉर्म आवर डिस्टिंग रीडर्स एंड पार्टिसिपेंट डिस्टिंग रीडर्स एंड पार्टिसिपेंट दैट राहुल जी एज रिटर्न आर्टिकल विच इज बी आर पब्लिशिंग इन कॉलेज पोस्ट ऑन ओपन सोर्स सॉफ्ट सोर्स इंटेलिजेंट सॉफ्टवेयर Uh, that's going to be very useful for all of us. That how open source intelligence of software can be used for doing the intelligent uh, assessment and intelligent aspects of it. Now, would you continue with your presentation? Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ramesh, and uh, thank you, Dr. Ramesh Ji, for introducing me. And uh, um, of course, it, on paper it looks to be very long, but uh, of course. Uh, it has uh, got uh, um, i got chance to work with people like you and uh, especially over the last 3 uh, years uh, since i have been part of uh, dr pans uh, group and uh, where i have got a chance to kind of interact with a lot of uh, um, uh, persons who come with ac- academic excellence so so this is uh, uh, really my pleasure to be part of uh, this uh, uh, this session and thanks for inviting me for this so today uh, i i would like to share some thoughts on uh, leadership and uh, how leadership is perceived uh, uh, by uh, different people and especially how neuroscience uh, research is helping us to understand uh, the leadership Uh, skills and uh, how leaders should uh, work uh, and how they can kind of improve uh, their performance as a leader uh, by being aware of uh, this neuroscience what neuroscience tells us so uh, will it be fine if i use some slides uh, dr sharma ji Uh, can I uh, present some slides? Uh, yes, Rahul ji, you can share your yeah. screen, please. Okay, okay, fine. Thanks. Uh, Because in uh, uh, Google Meet it is free, so. Yeah, is is my screen visible? Uh, yes, 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 and uh, you can uh, you you may uh, make it full screen mode. Very good. Yeah. It is, so. It is visible. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so the concept of uh, neuro leadership—that's uh, basically the neuroscience. What neuroscience teaches us about leadership. So, to begin with, let's let's understand what is leadership. Uh, so we have we are familiar with these spaces. Uh, we are familiar with this space, which is a leader in a first domain. Uh, first was the in the in the political domain and and again a leader from the politics so what do these people have in common uh, any thoughts anyone would like to share so what made them successful at getting others to vote for them uh, we know that uh, there are some we vote for them we work for them or in fact across a vast country with them so there are people who kind of uh, follow them look for uh, what what they are doing and uh, what what how they guide us so how, how do we define leadership so it's a basically the ability to influence people to achieve specific outcomes so a leader has to define what what goal we want to achieve and uh, how we can uh, take along the people the team the 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 people who are working with us all of them to achieve that particular goal so a leader is someone who can see how things can be improved and who rallies people to move towards that better vision so leader creates that nice vision that we would like to achieve and uh, He he rallies around the people to to achieve that vision, and as as part of this leadership, he needs to empower people, he needs to empower, um, inspire people, and he needs to lead the change. He needs to kind of uh, 
take the people along on this path of uh, uh, to, towards that particular goal and he, he of course needs to share his vision so leaders can work towards making their vision a reality while putting people first so it's very very critical that leader when when he is interacting with with the people uh, he has to ensure that the people are put first leaders need to motivate people and also be empathetic and connect with them to be successful sir, sorry sir kindly you? change your slide sir excuse me sir kindly change your slide please okay thank you
um, mainly responsible for. They they want the leaders are response uh, are responsible for identifying what what is to be changed and uh, rallying around people to achieve that change. So leadership remains one of the most complex and fascinating subjects of the twenty first century. And uh, if you look at the hiring patterns, hiring organizations are increasingly focusing on leadership skills in their potential hires. So uh, the question comes: Are you ready for that 21st century leadership? So the next question comes: Is are leaders born or made? So many times people think that leaders are born. So it's a question whether uh, it's a nature. or versus nurture whether you can nurture leadership capabilities uh so it's true that some leadership traits may get passed genetically uh so you you may have a newborn which which has some some of the traits coming from from his uh, parents but leadership qualities can always be developed with sufficient focus so it's like uh it's not if you are not born with the kind of leadership skills uh, or leadership traits you can't develop them so it's a both intertwined with each other and scientific studies suggest that leadership is 30% genetic and 70% learned so in a way you can uh, say that leaders are made and not born ultimately it boils down to how a person practices and builds on his leadership skills so even if a person is born with leadership traits it it's no use unless until he practices that right ragu we are on slide 3 uh, are you is it is it not changing when i am showing the slides no. you need to click on the left thumbnails 7 8 like that because i think if you are simply clicking then <coughs> it is not now we are on leadership and human behavior now this oh, is oh. Okay. Uh, Some more. I think uh, then I was just flipping through the slides. So, no, no. is it kindly, not? Kindly keep clicking in the left thumbnails. Then we will see the relevant. Uh, which which left thumbnail? Sorry. Oh, it means that uh, uh, you okay, have okay. selected. Yeah. Otherwise, if you can make it. Yes. Rak Sharma, you do it, and he'll 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 follow it up. No, no, no. Is it is it kind of uh, now? I have shown this leadership is about bringing in change. Is it visible? Uh, now we see leadership and human behavior. That slide seven number seven. Okay. We are, we are on it. Now I am I am showing two bullets now. Uh, not. This it has around seven seven bullets. Okay. Perhaps you have another screen on your machine, and what we see. Did you select a window or what? I think it is better if you can uh, means stop sharing then share again with entire screen. That will be better. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks for that suggestion. Please select entire screen and then your PPT and whatever you see, we will see that then. Okay. now it is nature leaders yes our leader bonds or made we are on it now okay so i was just talking about this Ji. and uh, i talked about nature versus nurture and then both are intertwined and scientific study suggests that leadership is 30% genetic and 70% learned is it visible now yes yes these findings propose that leaders are not made born okay and ultimately it boils down to how a person practices yes Okay. Uh, thanks for uh, highlighting this. I don't think I would have continued just like it. No, no, it's okay. Please proceed now. Good. Okay. So leadership and human behavior. Uh, so leadership is about bringing in change. So as we said, like uh, leaders are responsible for bringing in the change. And as and as a leader, you need support of your followers, peers, seniors, and others to accomplish your objectives. and to gain their support you must be able to understand and motivate them 
to do this you must know how people behave in different situations and human behaviors are driven by brain and brain raises uh, change so brain wants whatever is continuing let let it continue but uh, so it's a, there's a kind of inertia and uh, if there is a change brain always raises so based on the studies it is found that fear and error detection circuitry in the brain so brain has different sections which have a sensors which basically detect uh, threats and uh, some some good situations and uh, uh, if if there is a threat threatening scenario the 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 sensors will uh, basically guide the neur our uh, neural system put next slide they put next slide yes sir he will come sir this means that it is incredibly easy to induce fear and negative emotions to others so the question comes is leadership art or science so the human behaviors are driven by brain and brain raises change that that we have discussed that so for many leadership is purely an art as it involves dealing with people as there is a human element to it view of disease it is just like how people used to view diseases before microscope microscopes were invented and once microscopes were invented people could identify the different germs and different uh, bacteria and and uh, accordingly they could det- uh, discover different uh, uh, medicines to treat those diseases so similarly neuroscience research is providing a lot of insight into brain and how it controls the human behaviors uh, neuroscience is a lo- biological science that is concerned with the function of brain and the nervous system and uh, with a mri technology uh, researchers can now see uh, what are the kind of aha moments uh, in our brain uh, when when we feel good and when we feel bad uh, so how does our brain uh, react to that so that that is being analyzed through the mri technology and uh, that neuroscientists have examined the fear center as well as the extensive extensive reward circuitry so the lot of research in neuroscience has helped us understanding the leadership traits better and that's what we are going to uh, uh, focus more during the uh, remaining session so neuro leadership is the result of neuroscience research in the field of leadership and it applies data gathered about the effect of leadership styles on brain and nervous system so there, there are different leadership styles and uh, when while applying these leadership styles on your people what kind of ch- effects it makes on the brain that is basically uh, analyzed through new in under neuro leadership and uh, that helps in identifying what what are the going to the right practices as as a leader uh this helps in uh, altering the leadership patterns that suit best to the organization and uh, results in a more dedicated and happy workforce so brain comp- brain is a very very complex system uh, a human brain has 100 billion neurons each neuron connected to 10000 uh, other neurons and you can imagine that sitting on your shoulders is the most complicated object in the whole known universe and what are neurons neurons are the fundamental units of brain and nervous system these are the cells that act as sensors as well as actuators so those uh, who may be uh, involved with uh, uh, electronics and instrumentation those uh, those who must be familiar with these terms sensors and actuators so uh, as sensors these are responsible for receiving uh, sensory inputs from the external world so if there is some something happening in the world and uh, that can that is sensed by again neurons that sense uh, reaches neurons and uh, uh, these uh, neurons these sensor neurons give commands to the actuator neurons so actuator neurons basically give motor commands to muscles so 
for example like uh, your hand touches in a hot object the signal goes to a sensor neuron which in turn passes on this information to the actuator neuron that instructs the muscles to withdraw immediately so the moment you hit an hot object uh, immediately you withdraw your hand and that happens through this communication which happens very very fast and this communication of threat from sensor to actuator neuron happens via something called neurotransmitters and what are neurotransmitters these are basically some chemicals which are present over in neurons and which get released by sensor neurons so i have just taken a small clip uh sorry a small picture where i am showing two neurons which are connected through uh, uh different connectors and uh, these are the two end points of these connectors which uh, have a space in between them which is called synapse so these neurotransmitters are these chemicals which are stored in these neurons and they get released when the sensor neuron uh has detected some signal and uh, once this receiver neuron uh receives them it creates that action so all that happen although it looks to be very very complicated so uh, but it happens very very fast and uh, uh, these are uh, some some actions which uh, this could be kind of a, in this case it was a motor action where uh, you directed a kind of a hot object and uh, you did you guided your hand to kind of be withdrawn but it could be some other diff different kind of sense and uh, like for example you may be kind of uh, getting a smell of a tasty food and uh, that may be kind of indicating uh, some kind of a giving you pleasure in terms of uh, getting that nice feeling so so these are this is a kind of a small model where how um, the feelings get generated in our brain these are some of the brain chemicals uh, these are four brain chemicals known as dopamine ser serotonin oxytocin and endorphin so dopamine is uh, essentially a motivating chemical a motivation chemical so when you uh, it produces some kind of anticipation or some kind of a, 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 a desire to achieve something so when you uh, uh, when you have a sweet sweet smell of say, maybe chocolate uh, that kind of uh, increases kind of desire in your brain to uh, to achieve to to get it and that basically is due to dopamine so dopamine gets released as soon as you get that sweet smell of chocolate serotonin is uh, basically uh, something which you get to uh, you get a good feeling when you have a, a, a kind of a good positioning of yourself so you you did some good work and uh, then that good work gets recognized by people and uh, that positioning gives you a good feeling and uh, this this basically happens due to this chemical called serotonin oxytocin is uh, considered to be a love uh, or trust uh, chemical and when you kind of uh, get a environment where uh, you get kind of a um, uh, uh, trust and uh, safety uh, social safety kind of environment this gives you a relaxing feeling and comfort feeling and uh, the last one is endorphin which is uh, released when you are when you are facing a kind of a extreme situation so when you are uh, maybe participating in a race and uh, um, you want to kind of achieve uh, uh, and win that race so you put all your energies and is in spite of kind of maybe there is uh, there is some pain in your leg or there is some some other kind of uh, obstacle but still you forget about all that and you try to achieve that uh, that objective and this forgetting about that pain is basically because of endorphin and that helps in achieving that 
extreme pleasure which is kind of a euphoria so these are four different chemicals which help us which get produced in our brain and uh, these are known as happiness chemicals and uh, they they provide us happiness and pleasure situations uh, in different scenarios so these are four neurotransmitters uh coming to the next concept which is uh, threat versus rewards so our brain is wired to look for threats or rewards the brain exists for our survival and it constantly constantly scans the environment to identify and respond to threats and opportunities uh, seeking ways to minimize threats and maximize rewards so anything which is uh, uh, which brain treat, treats as threat uh, it may come up with a flight or fight kind of response so either you get prepared to fight that situation or or run away from that and that basically is dependent upon a chemical called cortisol so this cortisol is released that increases blood sugar and suppresses the immune system so energy can be redirected to address the perceived threat so so these are different uh, situations of threat how brain handles them so our survival depends on our ability to make predictions so brain should be able to predict what is going to happen and uh, and the primary goal of brain is to predict where and how we can avoid threats and encounter rewards because the brain seeks to make accurate predictions it is aversion to uncertainty so if there is anything which leads to uncertainty uh, brain doesn't like it so it wants that it should be a uh, certain of what is happening so brain dislikes ambiguity or a lack of control or autonomy so brain is always looking for that it should be in complete control of the situation so uh, brain perceives threats to status and social standing similar to the way it perceives physical injury and pain so even if it's a kind of a threat to my uh, social status or standing it the brain is going to uh, treat it as a similar uh, physical kind of a threat and uh, reward so in a social setup uh, uh, in a kind of organizational setup uh, the threat will induce withdrawal or disengagement so if there is a threat people will get disengaged with their work or the system and it will cause a reduction in the performance of the people while a reward leads to better engagement and enhanced performance so if i have if my brain has some uh, uh, threats which will withdraw me from uh, the system and uh, disengagement what it leads to it leads to a uh, tunnel vision uh, increased generalization over exaggeration risk aversion people become averse to risk uh, poor thinking and problem solving and lashing out people unnecessarily kind of uh, blame others so this is what happens when an organization is faced uh, or uh, creates a kind of a threat situation on the other hand if it creates a kind of a rewarding situation it causes a participation and engaging engagement of people so it leads to heightened awareness richer connections new learnings new ideas uh, more option generation improve problem solving and willingness to do uh, difficult things so this is how our brain uh, impacts so if i get a threat full environment it will cause disengagement of people on the other hand if i have a rewarding environment it leads to enhanced engagement of people so there is a model called scarf which can be used by leaders uh, but knowing all this uh, what is given by uh, neuroscience so this is a leadership framework created by david rock and uh, it's based on emerging insights in the neuroscience uh, 
it's an abbreviation for status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness. And uh, it's a shorthand way of remembering what the brain needs in order to perform effectively. So let's let's see what what these th terms are. So status is not like a kind of a something like a high high five status. The status here refers that I have got an identity. My my contributions are uh, known, and I have got a uh, my work is identified. So basically, I am valuable. So that is basically the status means. So as a leader, we need to ensure that each and every person in the team has some clear identity and he feels valuable. Then the second thing is certainty. So as a leader, I need to ensure that uh, uh, the team members have uh, clarity about what is expected from them and uh, what is uh, what what lies in the future what what we want to achieve and uh, what is a path to be followed and also if there is any change in or any update i should be informed so i should be uh, knowing where i stand that's what this certainty means then autonomy means i have got a uh, i have cer a, a certain autonomy to do my work it's not like i am being kind of uh, uh, pushed too much and uh, uh, i have i don't have control on my work so i have a choice i can i can make i have choice and i can make uh, what what best suits to achieve the goal and r which is relatedness uh, uh, means how i relate myself to the society to the people to the organization and uh, that gives me a feeling of belongingness so if i feel i'm part of the system that gives me a very uh, a safe and comfortable comforting feeling and uh, the last one is f which stands for fairness so if i know that uh, i have a I am being treated fairly, and uh, my contributions are going to be uh, treated with respect and are going to be valued. That's what gives me another comfort feel. So, what we studied, uh, what we kind of looked at in terms of threat versus rewards. So, this leadership model called SCARF uh, is taking care of all threat and. Uh, uh, threat and reward situations by these five different areas status certainty autonomy relatedness and the fairness and that's uh, what uh, we as leaders need to be aware of and uh, need to keep in mind so any questions so far Go ahead and you complete your things, then there will be some few questions. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, so, probably I stopped sharing, so I need to start sharing once again. Okay, so I need to start sharing once again. Okay, so I need to start sharing once again. Okay, so I need to start sharing once again. Okay, so I need to start sharing once again. Okay, so I need to start sharing once again. Okay, so I need to start sharing once again. Okay, so I need to start sharing once again. Okay, so I need to start sharing once again. Okay, so I need to start sharing once again. Because eight o'clock is a time when they have to uh, break for ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, two minutes, two minutes more. Okay. Okay. So there's another concept of mirror neurons, uh, where we say that uh, a neuron is um, kind of responding in a similar way. You have missed your audio, <coughs> Rahulji, you have missed your audio. Yeah. Rahulji? Please yeah, listen. Uh, your network is... Uh, you have missed your audio. Rahulji? 
he may be joining back sir his internet may might have acha internet might have <laughs> <laughs> Very bad. All lectures are just like this. But it's a one-off problem. Actually, that's why that's why we have to do something else. I'm doing it. That's why we have to do something else. Yeah. What happened, Raul? <coughs> Uh, yes, sir. Maybe what happened to Rajin? Uh, it means his uh, net uh, has got disconnected. That's why. Okay. Okay. So in the okay, meantime, you, have, you can. Uh, yeah, let's have some questions. Let's have some questions for him. Yeah, Sanjay. Because eight eight o'clock will break for ten minutes. By that time, he'll re resume his uh, uh, network or something. Because he said that if you have some questions, please go ahead with your questions. Which could be noted. Uh, Sanjay no. sir, you were saying something. Please go ahead. Yeah, Jee Jee. Yeah, I, yeah. I have some questions. Can I can I pose it? Now? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You know, what happened was with the Prager was, you know, at the beginning, very beginning, he said, the brain resists change. I am not in agreement with that. Brain cannot resist change. Brain is evolved, giving us all the materials to evolve to the time. That we need with the changes in the society, in ourselves, in leadership, in all matters. So, brain is a functional uh, instrument which helps us to do things. Just from first, it just just clear. But it's such an excellent presentation, and it's so precise that it makes sometimes some decisions. You cannot be really situation. Yeah. You cannot become too precise in this context because these needs are. Evolving, our leadership criteria would be changing. Leadership requirements are changing; would be changing. So, it's good to have precise ideas so that you can always attack some points and then do better in it. So, it's a very excellent presentation. You have a copy of that. Yeah. Did you, can you arrange yeah. for putting this paper in a very good presentation? But it's very precise so that we can make points in every stage. How can we do better in each area? Uh, yes, sir. These uh, slides are uh, beautiful, and they explain everything. So Rahul ji will share with it, yeah. and he is back uh, joining us. Thank you, Guru. Oh, I, I uh, I'm sorry, Rahul uh, ji. The connection got disconnected. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I'm just taking off for some time. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. ओके राहुल जी ओके सो सो वी वी विल ब्रेक फॉर सम टाइम और नो यू गोड गोड फिनिश ओके सो या सो आई एम लेफ्ट विद जस्ट फ्यू स्लाइड्स मोर सो आई जस्ट क्विकली कंप्लीट दोस एंड देन प्रोबब्ली वी कैन वी कैन टेक क्वेश्चंस सो लेट्स शेयर द स्क्रीन अगेन Is it visible? Ah, uh, please go with full screen mode. Yes, mirror neurons. Okay, so neurons. Uh, these are uh, mirror neurons. Are uh, neurons which respond equally uh, when we perform an action, when we witness someone else perform the same action. So, for example, like uh, when we watch someone drinking coffee, uh, mirror mirror neurons in our brain fire in the same pattern. So. as they as though we were lifting the cup and swallowing the coffee so it's like uh, uh, when i see a person enjoying a chocolate or coffee i i also get a kind of a similar kind of feeling so mirror neurons the concept of mirror neurons is also very much applicable in a kind of organization setup uh, when uh, we talk about leadership so there is a basis for empathy and uh, in a workplace a leader needs to be aware that emotions are contagious and uh, a negative discouraged attitude can spread through a team and uh, lead to employee disengagement reducing productivity so if if i if a leader has a negative attitude that will spread across the team uh, 
and uh, on the other hand a can do happy energetic emotional climate is also uh, contagious so if i if i have a kind of a positive uh, behaviors with others uh, others will also uh, respond accordingly so uh, a leader needs to be aware of uh, uh, these aspects and uh, this is another concept leadership versus dominance so i'll just quickly complete this so leadership requires earning trust from others and which cannot be demanded and the force is the tool of domination uh, but it creates resistance and uh, it can trust can only be given and not can be uh, taken or demanded so leadership unlike dominance requires followers to choose to follow and not kind of making a demand for that and uh, of course if trust is broken uh, in a heartbeat but repaired reearned only over a long period of time not hours but days weeks even months so a very recent example i think uh, all of we have seen that uh, uh, what happened in rajasthan where uh, the the trust of uh, 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 the the for the uh, congress uh, uh, presidency uh, that got kind of uh, broken with just one that uh, in order to influence team members we need to be motivated and we need uh, they need to be defined with proper goals and uh, corresponding rewards which basically help in uh, producing dopamine and uh, people feel motivated then clear communication helps in reducing ambiguity and uncertainty uh, which are considered threat by brain learning is continuous uh, the brain is uh, in a continuous learning mode and uh, a leader needs to ensure whatever we talk uh, we need to also behave accordingly otherwise if people observe a difference between what we talk and what we do uh, then it creates confusion and people get disengaged similarly uh, and acknowledging and recognizing good performance uh, is a great producer of serotonin and uh, basically it helps in uh, improving the self esteem of team challenging assignments are again very very important uh, uh, for enhancing the engagement because uh, they they help in producing endorphins and uh, creating a social trust by creating a, a lot of uh, engagement activities that's again uh, something which leaders should look follow this slide is uh, just a kind of summary of what a leadership uh, qualities this is kind of something which my view is uh, they need to have a vision and a purpose foresight mission passion and commitment uh, with focus and drive then communication should be good in terms of inspiring influencing and motivating people they should be able to create trust walk the talk delegate and empower people then leader should be able to respond to situations with confidence courage and taking tough decisions and uh, listening is again very very critical from a leadership perspective they should have empathy humility they should be available to their team members with patience and open mind resilience is important for a leader uh, to tolerate uh, to, to having tolerance love and emotional stability so that is again something which is needed from expected from leader and cooperation in terms of team spirit problem solving and win win that is something which is uh, expected from a leader and uh, lastly and most critical is integrity integrity honesty and transparency 
these are some uh, real hallmarks of the leadership qualities. So this is how I summarize uh, the expectations from a leader. Uh, in a summary, I would say that a successful leadership in a scientific way means activation of the reward mechanisms and reduction of threat scenarios. Is a video also available uh, which which you can have a look at. Uh, so, but I'm just talking here, and uh, I'll be happy to take any questions if you know. Thank you very much, Dawalji. <laughs> yes, sir. Any questions? If you have, I want you to go ask you. Yeah. Yes. Yes, please. I want to ask you something, sir. Uh, actually, I want to be a leader. Actually, a political leader. Uh, how to prepare myself uh, from now on? Now I'm 33. Uh, I I want to join after 40. I'm preparing from now. Okay. okay. How now I can have to figure? Okay, okay. Thank you for your question. Uh, we we might collect few more questions that we'll have a special workshop for you how to prepare for the <laughs> political leadership. Anyway, we'll have this question and few more questions we can have. Any 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 uh, uh, Manoj, we have question. Doctor Usman, do you have any question? Then we break for yeah. Okay, I have a question. Okay. So my question is uh, what is the role of training in neuron training training? Okay. How you can change the trait of a person. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good question. Any any other question, Manoj? Sir, uh, first of all I must uh, thank uh, Professor Rahulji for giving such a nice presentation of the vast subject which is summarized within less than uh, one hour. It is uh, obviously a great thing uh, and uh, neuroscience and leadership is obviously uh, well connected because everything is coming, uh, coming out from brain. So, but the thing is that the question arises that Every human being has uh, neurons, every human being have brain, but some of only few of them become leader and others become followers. So what are the reasons uh, yeah. behind such, such kind of few leaders are coming out uh, of the vast population and others are following? For example, just now we can uh, uh, give example of our Honorable Prime Minister uh, Modi ji. So, he is the leader and country is the follow is following him not only the country but uh, entire world is following him so <laughs> that is that is the intricate question i would like to ask that is also questionable question <laughs> anyway uh, uh, we, uh, okay. questionable oh. question. Uh, 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 bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Go Sir, uh, may I have yeah everyone May I do good, sir? Yeah, audible. Go ahead. Hello? Uh, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, so, it is a very nice presentation. It is a very nice presentation. That is needed. You know what you're saying? The leader is about being. Yeah. So, Rahul is saying that leadership is about bringing change. Yeah. About bringing the change, sir. Okay. Leadership is about bringing the sense. Yeah. And management is to make the things happen. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so far as our situation is concerned, my education as a principal, I retired as a principal, what I was trying to introduce the new things as an entrepreneur, as a leader, So 80% when there is a difference of 80% for a new sense, then it becomes a standstill. Then it becomes beyond manageable. So how we can, you know, implement such things in the Indian context? Sir? That is my question. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Bauri, you have any question? Dr. Bauri. Sir, can I add another question? 
Dr. Bhavari or Dr. Bivan, you have any question? Uh, yes. I is actually the session was very really interesting, especially on neuro leadership. Uh, it helped me a lot to think about what is important, especially for um, leader. I like the point when uh, Professor Rahul was speaking about some people are born to be leaders, while others are made to be leaders. And I would, I also have, you know, when I talk with other people, I realize that most of them are actually not born as leaders but they are made to be leaders in their encounter as they proceed ahead in years, maybe through their learning, schoolings, etc. Uh, one question that I would like to ask uh, Professor Rahul is whether, which is more important for a leader, a head or a heart? For a leader, which is more important, a head or a heart? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank, yeah. you. thank you for your question. Dr. Bowery, if you have. Dr. Bowery. Okay. No question. No. Okay, go ahead. Uh, but I suggest that we are already exceeding the time. Uh, shall you break for 10 minutes and resume and then draw you by that time ca have collected all the questions and then respond? Uh, we we'll break for. No, uh, we we'll break for. I, sir, I think better, uh, uh, you know, take these questions now. And Manoji wants to have a supplementary question. Uh, no, no, I, the, 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 so, it will completely disrupt our time management. So I, I would suggest to Dr. Sharma that uh, let, let them have a break of uh, five minutes, if not ten minutes. And by that time, Rahulji will collect a few more answers and then second round will be given to the uh, uh, Manoj and other people, Dr. Manoj and other people. Okay. You have collected, Rahulji, you have collected the questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Let break for, if not more, it's seven. Uh, Dr. Sharma, are you permitting me to do that? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, yes, uh, yes. because then uh, everything will get uh, this thing. Okay, we break for another seven years, if not more, because we exceeded the time for, uh, let's say, seven, five to seven minutes, and we reassemble. Re re By that time, uh, uh, Dr. Adalji uh, uh, will gather all those uh, answers and try to respond. You have noted it, we'll, we'll come back after seven minutes. Is it okay for all of you? Yes, sir. Uh, it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, society uh, to to adhere to. So, so uh, as we say that you have to first uh, introspect in terms of what uh, makes you think that you should become a political leader, and uh, what uh, how what vision you want to kind of uh, achieve, how you want to uh, serve the society. Ultimately, politics and political leader, uh, it's, it's not a very uh, easy job. Uh, it, it's not a very easy thing. And uh, if you have to kind of uh, uh, become a political leader, you need to be very, very, very much convinced that you want to get into uh, that, that role. And uh, once you have decided, yeah, that's that's something which you want to kind of plunge plunge into. Then you need to uh, uh, look at uh, some of the uh, some of the leadership qualities which we have seen. I have also summarized those in my uh, one of the slides. Uh, you can see and make a self assessment. You can do your own assessment on in terms of those uh, qualities and uh, see yourself where you want to. Um, where you are good at and where you need to kind of improve uh, uh, and uh, wherever you need to improve you need to develop those skills uh, develop those areas so good, good. maybe okay. I'll I'd like to kind of share that slide once again that will help me in answering some some of the other questions as well I think that's good but one thing you also can cover this point when uh, Usman has is that training when you say kind of developing brain uh, training and the training should take part of this that uh, Osman has raised that question right right so so these are some of the uh, leadership qualities which uh, um, I had summarized in this uh, uh, circle and uh, these are uh, the area so uh, you should be able to kind of visualize things then uh, uh, passion communication communication is something very very important so 
uh, you need to see how good you are in communication if not then you need to kind of uh, take certain trainings on this then uh, uh, in general you need to look at your soft skills uh, the so soft basically skills. yes please you need to empathize with people you need to uh, look at uh, how you have the team spirit and team work so all these areas you need to kind of look at and uh, uh, see there are different training programs available for all of these and uh, if you need some help uh, uh, you can get in touch with me i can help you in connecting with what the corresponding leadership uh, leadership training programs Okay, let's go to next question. Uh, which uh, one knows as that why a few people only become the leader and why large number of people do not become the leader. Okay, so so that is basically simply because different people have different abilities in terms of uh, these qualities. So some people are very very passionate about what they want to achieve, and uh, uh, some people think about doing something, but are not so passionate uh, similarly so all these attributes which are listed over here they have a degree of uh, kind of a spectrum in terms of uh, where do you stand and uh, that makes you that makes a difference so for example communication abilities how you are able to communicate your ideas and how you can communicate what what you think so we we uh, i guess you were taking example of <coughs> modi ji so the we have seen what kind of oratory skills he has how he is able to connect with his audience how he is able to respond to uh, their audience so so that is something uh, which which comes only with constant practice and uh, and uh, some people work on all these qualities on a continuous basis uh, and some people have some dif different other priorities so but uh, a leader needs to be good in all these to be able to succeed okay heart and ha head and heart issue of heart head and heart okay so uh, question is whether a leader should be uh, stronger on head or heart so i would say like both because uh, um, of course head is important a leader has to be a uh, head strong but at the same time uh, if a leader works without heart uh, as i said like uh, a a leader has to take his people along then uh, he has to be uh, 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 he has to be empathetic he has to uh, at the same time he has to be head strong so it's not uh, like one needs to be uh, stronger than other but uh, he, a leader has to be good at both okay good good okay is there uh, any question which i missed out or I think there were you have covered almost all questions. You have covered think... almost all questions. Okay. Any other questions? Second round, or then we move on to next issue. Uh, Any Man question on second round? Doctor Manoj wanted to ask a question. Uh, yeah, Doctor Manoj. Uh, sir, yes, uh, type my question in the chat. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible, sir? Yes. Yeah, please. yeah. Sir. Uh, being the head of the institution that is as a principal we are practically confused sometimes we have to take leadership and sometimes we have to do as a uh, work as a manager so what is our role in in this institute that is very much confusing so can we get any clarification jo whether who are we whether we are leader or we are manager okay so uh, i would say like uh, especially for the senior positions in an in any organization uh, one has to play a dual role it cannot be a pure manager role or it cannot be a pure leader role, role. Uh, you have to uh, i would say like it's a kind of a management as well as leadership not as a manager or a leader so uh, you have to see a mix you have to play a mix role between leadership as well as management and uh, especially uh for the senior leadership uh if you don't have the right uh, kind of support system uh then you have to take up lot of management activities yourself so 
Uh, of course, a leadership senior leadership is expected to play more of a leadership role. Senior senior manage uh, senior persons in an organization. But uh, if you don't have uh, the complete team or the kind of uh, um, uh, sometimes you need to fill up for the people uh, or the kind of uh, positions uh, and and take up the management activities yourself. Exactly, sir. We are, we have to play a dual role. as a leader as well as manager and uh, this is the this is the position and so we have to uh, uh, give focus on both the purpose and we have should have the ability to be a leader as well as a good manager right thank right. you yes right right okay uh, we can thank uh, rahul ji for uh, making a very sharma ji Uh, yes sir uh, it has been a fantastic presentation our uh, big clap for him and uh, as our friends they have requested certainly we will share the slide decks uh, as it well is as already well. it's it's already on the um, uh, lms so they can access from there so thank you rahul oh. and uh, we hope that in future also uh, you will uh, oblige us by sharing your expertise on relevant topics which fit into the main theme of educational leadership but you continue with us you are not going out <laughs> sure, okay. sure. Thank, you. thank you thank you dr sharma ji and yeah, yeah. Uh, you continue with us and yeah thanks. thanks for giving me a chance to kind of interact with all of you and uh, yeah i'll be here okay okay friends uh, now uh, uh, let us uh, hear from the chief professor <laughs> jd sharma i i don't need uh, to introduce him to yourself he is the main master behind this program uh, and uh, he has been uh, uh, at a very truly the senior leadership positions into the higher education field in india he has uh, uh, you know uh, provided leadership through university grants commission uh he has been a very senior professor of higher education at the national institute of educational planning uh and administration nipa and uh, he has uh, directed the uh, uh center for educational uh, consortium for educational communication which is a part of uh, ugc very very prestigious and very important uh, a educational media center where uh, you know beautiful um, uh, uh, e content is developed by them so he has uh, professor jiri sharma has provided uh, uh, leadership to all these uh, important organizations which are a crucial part of indian education system so with this uh, brief in uh, introduction about him may i request uh, you sir that now kindly proceed with the third part of today's session thank you so much thank you very much i have a uh, very interesting question to myself that interesting question is uh, he has uh, already spoken about neuroscience and i feel that ai is trying to capture all the neuroscience aspect of it and try to take over your brain in course of time i discuss about that what ai is going to do because neuroscience has help and enable things to happen and then that is going to influence the future and when i say fourth industry revolution before i come to fourth industry revolution let's see that what kind of system we had in education and higher education as well the first industry revolution gave us a factory model of education where the, they wanted large number of persons to be working on the uh, machines and etc so some training has to be given for that and then we created schools we created colleges and that sort of thing was needed at large scale level and that's why it was done and the second industry revolution made requirement little bit knowledge requirement much more in skill and knowledge requirement for that purpose so we started expanding higher education expanding school education education process was give a syllabus translate the syllabus and then and then carry out your activities and carry out on the on the production side on the distribution side or even the development side the third industry revolution started breaking the old model it started breaking old model in the sense that uh, it is trying to come out of the sub factory model of education which was trying to change the 
change the pro process of production, distribution, and also thinking process, which which resulted into you might find a lot of development took place in terms of the science, in terms of computer, because computer came at the third in industry revolution. It was the beginning of the third industry revolution. And therefore, computation became easier, research became faster, and many other things happened. So here you find that factory model started slightly started giving way to the new model of education, which is taking place in through the computer system and the internet. And slowly internet came as a response to that kind of situation and therefore you find the product this all the systems of production this was started slightly slowly changing. When I started, I started the facet machine, I started electronic calculator, and then when I was completing my research, I started sixteen forty and when it was almost three hundred sixty. So you find faster growth of the development was taking place when it was slightly breaking from the old pattern of working research, research and etc. It was happening in every way, in all the field, all the field of uh, work and uh, uh, research, all the field of industry, all the field of services, services started changing very fast and that sort of thing was happening. And third industry started breaking the old model, little bit, not much. But fourth industry revolution, which neuroscience we have been talking about it, is a major, major shift in the process of development of the mankind, the human being. We first mankind changed the process of development came when the from animal human sources of energy changed to the mechanical sources of energy, which we call steam and water and other things. Then electric, then electronics. These were major changes. From animal human sources of energy to mechanical sources of energy, large scale industry and other things. And the third when the electronics came then computation, etc., computers, etc., became. When the compression technology became, internet became very easy, and you find that changes came in internet. When we started internet, it used to take a lot of time to get the uh, packets come to us, and it used to come in packets, etc. So the, the, the technology was a, a little bit advancing, it was not okay. But as soon as you enter the fourth industry, there is one thing happened, this technology became computer and internet of things became, it's a kind of a change which became big way. Internet of things was then connecting with anything, anywhere in the world. Slowly internet came uh, earlier in around, if you really ask me, the internet started around 70s or uh, around late 70s. We were have a, having a conference in South Korea and the South Korea we are having the uh, conference, international uh, international uh, conference on the peace, higher education and peace. And one of the person who came over there and he put the desktop on the table and he showed that I am going to collect the data, get the data on sports security from US and I will show it to you. That way. At that time flexibility was there, fax was there, but internet was not there. But internet in 1970s, 1980s was a little bit in India. and but. By 90s, things started very fast because technological revolution became weaker, and that was the entry of the fourth industry revolution. Because here, from from the uh, mechanical to the computational to the now brain started the cognitive aspect of it. Neuroscience has taught people develop the research in neuroscience, and in fact, as as early as the uh, 80s, they they started talking on neural network for the computers. And that was the 80s they were started. And by 2000, change started on the one side, Internet of Things became very, the in terms of third uh, Internet system, and then fifth generation we are coming in the course of time. So it, it's completely changes the way people were working, and it's going to change the way people are going to work for future, and it also have challenges for the future in the education system. Early education, I said, factory model, second uh, industry revolution was also factory model, third slightly breaking, and fourth industry revolution is going to bring, bring about major change in the uh, in the tech, uh, in the education processes, in the production processes, and distribution processes, and even all aspects of life. That is what you and you are already observing. It, uh, before COVID, you never thought of the changes would be that fast, but then it started becoming very, very fast. Uh, you never thought of working from the uh, home earlier, and you uh, you thought of working, uh, studying at uh, uh, at home. Now things are going to change from the working from home, studying at home, from the studying from home. 
that kind of change will come. And the breaking of the silos which we are talking, the new education policy of the project, there is going to interdisciplinary orientation, there could be problem solving issues, they are going to become very, very important for the future than, than what you are giving. The fourth industry revolution is going to be a very major challenge to the leadership in terms of managing the what things are going to happen for the next five years or next ten years or there. I studied one of the very important book, which is called AI into 2041. And that explains how things are going to be 30, 20 years or so. The book was written in 2021 uh, and they are predicted for 2041. So you would find kind of changes which are coming. Neural network has enabled the system to take the cognitive role which was absent in the third industry revolution. In fourth industry, taking the cognitive role, so production processes, distribution processes are done through the through the, through the neural network. And if you go in much more advanced, that uh, AI which is going AI, and then uh, there are several parts of AI. There are several parts of AI, augmented reality, uh, and other aspects which I'll discuss with you. So the AI is expanding. AI is nothing but trying to look at the cognitive uh, thing of the brain. And most good part of the brain can be uh, visualized. And then uh, the, through the neural network, through the nerves, etc., messages can go as you were saying, touching the uh, heart thing, then messages go. They have already been in the neural network and through net, and therefore you find that uh, many things which you, uh, was not possible without the human being in terms of doing certain activities in the production, distribution, uh, medical sciences, everything that get them. You might have heard that some of the operations are being done through the process of uh, the a, a help of the doctor sitting anywhere in the world, and then they are they are instructing everything. And now. Uh, internet of thing has facilitated it, which we are not there. So many things are going to happen in this, this process. And fourth industry revolution is going to bring out major change. Major change that so a leader has to see what kind of changes which are going to take place in the future, next 10 years or not, which will continue. These abilities are fine, their purpose is fine, purpose, but awareness of what is going to happen in the future. If it happens that uh, your classrooms uh, are only used for the introduction and facilitation as the student has to work from uh, as work from home, study from home. That that situation might come. You have you might have heard a time when not only one person, ten person my, my daughter was studying for the supply chain management from the MIT. And you would be surprised that ten uh, one million students applied for that and they were and four million students for uh, lack students uh, completed their program on supply chain management by one institution providing this education throughout the world. So the break is taking place. On the other side, you are saying that ed tech companies are coming in big way. One ed tech company has established the relationship with the, uh, almost uh, 140 universities. and uh, So these changes are coming and a leader has to really look what kind of changes are coming in big way in terms of things that would change. Things of production, distribution, role of teacher, role of individual, as and changes of jobs are going to become very quick, very fast. We never realized uh, that now internet is becoming so low and fifth generation will become and sometimes AI help because uh, Dr. Sharma one day showed me that it could be when now we are sitting individually, but enable this, uh, it can enable that we are sitting in a conference room and we are interacting with each other as we are in the uh, virtual reality, that kind of thing. Right? So you would find that your, your cognitive role, which the students were performing after doing graduation, post-graduation, etc., that cognitive part of the cognitive role, which is well-known, etc., that part will be taken away and a new challenge would come to all the teachers, all the, uh, uh, the students for future. And job changes are going to be very fast than what were we are related. I'm going to share with you some of the uh, things which are dream, which is a dream, dream which is taking place. When I said 2021, people started seeing what kind of changes the AI is going to affect in the society, in the production process and distribution processes and in uh, and influencing the life of the people that I'm going to share with you in few slides and say that what kind of 
predictions they are making, what kind of uh, uh, visualization they have, exploration they have. I call it, it may be fiction, but sometimes it will become reality in court. Sometimes. Some of the part of reality which you are already seeing it. Can I have some of this, that slide which are 2041? Okay. 2041, if you can show them slides, which is, would be good. This is a, uh, this is fourth industry revolution. And you are seeing, which I am talking, the future story. This is a future story of the, uh, of the, what is going to happen. AI 2041, written by uh, Kofu, Lee and uh, the chain, all both Chinese uh, scholars. They have, and they are utilizing what's with the future. Development are quite stunning going to Internet of Things, which you are seeing now, it will become a uh, very uh, usable everyone, every time. Then AI, AI has all related aspects of uh, 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 augmented reality, virtual reality, MR, XR. That is the kind of a major change which is going to bring about the AI and in fact almost doing certain things which, is, uh, which was only done by the human brain. And but uh, still, human brain would be doing much more different and with uh, higher order, of, and therefore education becomes very important. Blockchain is another area where you find quantum computing as well as and these are the areas where we you find changes that will come very fast. And I'll share with you. Next slide. Here, the streaming. Uh, uh, there's a, that person is sharing some of the ten uh, important developments which are going to take place in the society next couple of years or maybe next 20 years or so. One is the streaming which you are not yet started. Streaming will become very fast, which is which will take away most of the cognitive thinking process of this. And he is showing through by a, uh, taking the example of a Bombay and showing Ganesha as a golden elephant and then he is trying to relate with the how human beings are thinking, what kind of incentive would be built in and the persons would be influenced their thinking use, etc. The cognitive part of many of the things which take place will be taking through the streaming. Streaming means that your information from various sources are streaming easily and other things. And it's changing the thinking process, even also predicting what you are going to think after some time because all data are going. Data analysis is taking place through the nerve and then the streaming takes place. This, yeah, there he has built a story around the Bombay where the person is uh, having uh, information and every person is trying to gather to streaming because streaming is offering some kind of incentive to that. Then first the old parents take it, then young people will take it and the young person also think, if I do what is going to happen, then AI informs the streaming tells you this is going to happen. So this kind of the slowness which we are having the process of data flow, information flow or ideas flow, that get into a very streaming block. So future is streaming is going to be a part of the process of uh, your communication system, part of the process of sharing information, etc. So he's sharing the streaming is going to be the next issue. And uh, as it is, you are finding the fifth generation uh, 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 process is already started. You find the mobile phone is going to fifth generation. And let me share with you a very interesting thing which is going to happen in India. India has launched several satellites in the sky for the last uh, five, six years back by 2018. They started experimenting it. I, uh, the uh, uh, Indian, uh, uh, Indian constellations, which is going to be as good as Google or uh, geo mapping, etc. Right now they are using it for India, but in course of time, they, so the streaming would become a reality in next five or six years of time because this is now through satellite process of uh, flowing of information data and AI helping them to analyze etc. So streaming is going to be one of the major innovation change which will take place for future. Next slide. God behind the mask which is uh, now you are already finding very interesting things which are happening. Generative adversarial network which, which was because the when the technology comes, technology has a, I always used to say knowledge has a two, uh, is a double side sword. But knowledge has a two aspects of it. You can, with the help, you can make the life of the people, make the society, and with the same knowledge, you can also uh, destroy the society. So this knowledge of technology, generative adversarial network, which will become very, so as it is started becoming, you know, 
uh, all sorts of fraud which are taking in the uh, in the finance and other area. So deep lakes, there is going to be fakes of various kinds. And the use of computer vision and biometric data, which are already collected in India as biometric data from the, from under the other card. And misuse of data through, through convulsion neural network. This is a neural network, neural science which is talking. Through that you can, that's what deep, deep faking is taking place. Today I got one of the in, uh, person writing to me that please don't take it, they are writing my name and etc. And they are asking for money, so my computer is in heck. So you would find that kind of thing. My adversarial, you know, what we call adversarial aerial neural network, which is going to be a part of the technology, other side of the technology, and the possible misuse of AI for manipulating people to a particular end, which is already started doing it. You, if you like it, I will, if you have seen the social dilemma, a kind of a movie which is made that how they are manipulating the thinking of the people, how they are changing this AI, is helping the. Uh, changing the even taking the people to a particular point. So this other side of the, this negative side of the technology development, which is going also take place because the technology is there. You can use it for positive. You can also use it for negative. But that aspect has to be said. And you have to be, as a leader, you have to be aware of what kind of possible misuse that can take place. That is already taking place, and that's why uh, we are also thinking of suggesting that it, uh, how. Uh, security process, AI security process will be really considered. And this is going to be a major change. We will be using the adversarial area, area new, uh, uh, adversarial network with deep fakes, use a computer for that purpose. They are manipulating the all sorts of manipulating elections, manipulating other things, and manipulating ideas and uh, for a particular end can take place through this process, which you are already seeing in many of the uh, 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 communication which take place, WhatsApp and other areas. Next. Here is a very going to, going to the major change which is going to come in the uh, in the world. Visualization of use of AI in education, which is going to be major. Use of AI in educational and development purpose. Uh, he shares a story of twin sparrows. What he says through AI you are developing the individual and even basic traits are there how they are going to be helped and they are going to manage. So education is going to be and now it's going to be very important. Earlier you were thinking. Uh, that only classroom would be able to do it, but no, many of the things are happening and many of the tech companies are trying to, uh, but, but he is going to, after five years, even the education of children, the education of development children can take through the process of AI from the uh, very start of the uh, two years or three years or five years of time. And there through his story, sharing the story of twin sparrows, two uh, young boys uh, separated from parents, how they work developed etc. This still they shares different kind of ideas, AIs and different kind of behavior and different kind of uh, responses and that's why. But the AI is taking care of their education, development process etc. Here the AI education is going to a very major change in next five or six years which you will find that data flow is coming, information flow is coming, analysis flow is coming, virtual reality is making things to happen as it is, as you know how operations could take place, analysis the, uh, could take this, all those things, and uh, classroom would become not uh, which often they call it uh, uh, flipped classroom, but it is going to be classroom would be at home, and then they come to this institution where the teachers work as a facilitator, the analyzer, and innovations and change and critical thinking, which will become very important in the uh, education processes. Innovation, therefore, in China, they have started specifically innovations in uh, the, how innovations could be helped analytical and critical thinking is a part of it and then liberal arts are being given uh, importance where the adaptive learning can take place, where the changes can take place, because things are going to change fast and then you should be and therefore AI in education is going to make it a very important change and that change should be really visualized by the teacher, uh, the people in the field of higher education and value. Next slide. Here I am saying very interesting story of use of AR, of augmented reality, virtual reality, MR and XR, where you find actually you are actually in the real situation. It is manipulated in such a manner and there he is showing the love story of a contact as love person uh, you, with not being contacted but still 
the whole process of law story which you find in any film etc can be seen through this uh, uh, augmented reality virtual reality mr xr manipulation and takes place in the almost real cell so this uh, expansion ai is because now neural network studies are going on very strongly and ai is part of ticking the brain function to to tell you frankly a lot of part of brain functions in this thing and and the technology is enabling and it seems to happen in this kind of thing therefore you'll find this these uh, augmented realities virtual realities and their extreme realities they they would make a real situation and the education process would be really affected by this called the big things are uh, and sometimes manipulation can also take place in this process next these are stories but he has explained the things of development in the form of stories and this i have already reported in the college post uh, you can see the review mix of vision and computer this is going to major change which you might have heard hello holographic presence of living and dead this is a, a another change holographic thing which you might have heard recently when the hologram of uh, the uh, subhas bose was put at uh, uh, india new uh, vista where they were telling me The, there you can have presence of the developer presence of living and dead can be possible with the mix of vision and computer takes place and in fact there is a layers a layers kind of thing that can really make that these things are becoming real and etc ai will be able to well we to the past and predict for future and based on the brain computer interface this is going to be major thing earlier the brain he has talked about neuroscience etc now computer a brain is taking into place the so whatever development which uh, uh, rahul ji was talking about the brain and brain, the, this thing this computer takes over the kind of a relationship computer brain interface will take place in future and that's going to bring about major change in what you think how you think in, and the process of the and that predictability part could be also taken during course of time etc which he calls hunting idol a person this name he has given hunting idol means the person uh, even present or they can be seen in holographic manner in certain situations etc and then uh, this becomes a, a kind of a, a change of brain computer uh, input uh, interface which he calls bci brain computer interface next you might have heard driverless cars etc everybody is talking about driverless cars and all these things which are very simple operations these uh, brain mistake please in fact uh, you must have heard the uh, some of the metros etc without driver etc these are simple operation but here what one is talking that in course of time gamification will be helping in the development of skills to operate cars or manually without really knowing the driving they have given a story of only driver in fact he was considered a, a person was considered a ghost uh, a gamification person who was playing game on this and but he was so good that uh, the nobody could defeat and they took help of this person and this person became a driverless car and he saved the lives of uh, hundreds of people etc that's why they call bully driver he is a driverless person he at the back of his the, the knowledge of computer knowledge system knowledge of uh, things become and the by the drone etc which you are finding at the back of it is basically a, a person who is sitting and doing thousands of people are working on at the back of drone operations etc so these are new changes that are going to come up there this and they will be helped to the ai and other related task next this is a very interesting thing and which is you must notice that what future is holding us to i know know that the As, as i started with the face it then electronic electric machine and then computer electric and now you have the i first put a stop in nepal when i came started at deepa first the desktop and then i is internet etc but that is again a, a, what you call linear and uh, the slow process of into the qubits means it, it is uh, a fraction of a uh, second which will you should take Five years to assess and uh, calculate and do things which can be done by the qubit text. So the quantum computing is going to be future of several data analysis, trillions of data, 
whole world data, uh, human being data can be analyzed in action of minutes, etc. This qubit is a quantum computing which is going to make the change. So your research process which used to take long time and uh, collecting data, uh, doing this thing process, it will undergo issue because data are already collected on various aspects. It's a land aspects of it, resource aspects of it, several other aspects of it, human behavior aspects of it, and quantum computing will help it, trillions of the big data analysis you might have heard earlier, but quantum computing is capable of breaking even the computers, which are blockchain. Blockchain is considered a, one of the very uh, robust system of uh, software which cannot, almost all financial systems in the world are being made and thousands of computers are being put at the end. There is one person who is a, uh, who is good at the quantum computing, he is affected by the, uh, some of the uh, uh, bad things which happened with his family and daughter and he is thinking of breaking the big computer system through the qubit and through the quantum computing and that's why they call it quantum genocide. If a one person is able to break the computer, this is the thought. And it will affect the whole world. It just will affect the whole world. You might have said to move to from 21st century when the people started what's happened moving to the, all the uh, uh, systems of moving system, aircraft, etc., and computer, etc. Et but this quantum computing is going to major change in the next few years. But when the qubit, qubit will really assess the things in a fraction of a second minute or fraction of a second the things which used to take uh, the years to assess. It. So that is going to major change and if you if people go to and then it is going to major uh, financial fraud which used to take place and now can take place. So that is then called genocide. Genocide is the computer destroying the computer to call quantum computing system with the qubits etc. That's going to major change for the time to come. So it is uh, this uh, he is visualizing etc. And but things are moving almost on the uh, slowly but uh, in a very fast set time you know, on the changes. Next, next slide, Samesh. Yeah, job savior. This is also a story of job savior. Jobs are going to change very frequently. Uh, today I was reading the fourth industry revolution, higher education etc. They say that you are not preparing the student for the next next job. There is a sixth job. Six. What is going to happen after six <laughs> job situation? Here the story of person, the uh, job situation is also changing. He is preparing for the next job, then again job savior is preparing for another job, for another job, because fast changes are taking place. Fast how to contain the passing and here therefore the brain which has not been developed as yet in the world with whatever the development is saying therefore higher education role is going to change completely in a big way and therefore one has to really think what kind of new uh, methods uh, to be adopted for future anterior project. And next, uh, I think that's going to be the last one. Next, Sarnaji. AI for happiness. Many people would become that how do I become happiness? Uh, you are just, uh, you heard the, the um, uh, Mithology is talking of happiness. Uh, 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 behavior because of uh, all those exotainment, etc. So they have already started putting in that that process of that which will give a kind of a, uh, happy. But that also has these kind of limitations and that and therefore one has to really think on other side of the story. But yes, the, this might help, but that doesn't help. But the process of AI can be used to make people happy, doing many things, etc. This is kind of stories, behavior, etc. That sort of thing would happen. He calls it AI for happiness. But at the end of the day, AI doesn't really make people because human brain is very fast going, as Vikas was telling. 
many other. It's going very fast and for changing. It's environment, situations, etc. I look into it and it responds to those situations. But at the same time, uh, even happiness, uh, desire, uh, expectation, etc. also change as the environment change, as the ecosystem change, etc. That's good. But it still is going to take a major role in this. Next slide. Here is a very important point he is making, the plenitude, because you find that AI is taking a lot of uh, responsibility in the production, discipline process, and large scale as the earlier you find that machines took it and reduce the dizzy of the people for even large scale production, etc. So AI is going to change a major part of human brain in terms of doing many technologies by its sources. And then new sources of energy is also going. So your plenitude means you have a lot of, uh, of uh, resources available, a lot of material available, and there, you, there is abundance of everything. And technology enables you to free from a lot of drudgery, through the earlier the physical drudgery, the mental drudgery, and now new thinking, etc. So you would find that plenitude is kind of abundant, abundance which the technology is going to make. And there is very important change which is suggesting which is taking place in a very big way in the world and we are also working that earlier whatever the energy which used after the human and animal source of energy, mechanical source of energy and all the energy cost it several things. Though cost in course of time reduced but they were not renewable. They were all uh, uh, non-renewable sources of energy and their cost was there. So there is a cost. You find that but uh, what are development which are taking in the place, there is a cost, etc. But solar energy is going to bring about a marginal, zero marginal cost in course of time. Therefore, people are working on the zero marginal cost. And if the energy also becomes very cheap, technology also enable, then it releases the lot of energy, a lot of things to the uh, to the people. And the, the, this plenitude would be possible with the AI technology and the solar energy coming together and all the development which I shared, I shared with you taking place. So, human being would be having a lot of uh, 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 facilities and at the same time zero cost energy. So, you have to search for the new kind of things, new uh, way of life, new working on the, on this planet. Earth. That's the sort of changes which are likely to That is a dream which is in, but you would find a slowly story where some of the things which are uh, fiction are going to bring over to it may take, um, if not 2041, it may take 2051, changes are going to be very fast. Now, higher education as we are a leader as to know what kind of changes that you have to get. And the last point, which is the end note, I, 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 I would like to make it. End note, last slide. End note is very interesting. This book also makes it, and that brings me to the also that we must find the economic model that is subordinate to the human needs and not human greed. That's what they are living there then. All technological development takes place through a process of purpose or process of greed which takes place in this. And therefore he is, he is also saying, you know, he said, we must find economic model. Now the economic model is a growing, developing more, distributing more, eating more, consumption more, all those things. Uh, and sometimes it overrides the human emotions, human thinking, etc. So it's a subordinate to human needs, not human greed. It keeps on changing. And exactly I also felt the other day when I was ending this story and reading the book and completing it, I said it sounds like very close to what Mahatma Gandhi had said. Nature has given us enough to meet human needs, but not human greed. So one has to really, even the, when the purpose, etc., one is trying to create that ambience through the education processes where you find that there is a limit to certain, there are no limit to knowledge, but there is a limit to certain things, which may lead to destruction, which may lead to more creation, etc. So these are the going to be major changes which may take place in the fourth industrial revolution. If not now, it may take place. Some of the sheets are already there, you will find. Some of the cognitive role of human beings are already taken care of. Neural Science Network has already given them ability, and that they call NERD, and that sort of responses come and sometimes very effective responses come. Other day, Mahmoud Aladi sent me a, a video where the robot is playing football 
where the volume was very effective. But that's a kind of a thing which you already programmed and doing things is not a major, the which is taking place in our But what is the major response to the higher education system for future? First thing that you should be aware of this. EdTech companies have come in a big way in the in the higher education system. And they almost all these, you might have heard Coursera, Edexcel, etc. They are, uh, first they went to the school education curriculum, etc. Now they will go for higher education curriculum. And with a, a policy coming in a way that, yes, you can learn from any source, anything, get any credit, you get a job, and then job would require certain kind of, so, so it is going to be a major challenge for higher education system. How are you going to respond to these technological changes which are taking? A lot of tech companies, as I said, one particular program of a particular institute is being taken by one million, means 10 lakh people throughout the world. And then 4 lakh people complete this kind of way in a period of one uh, one year. And you can see this new kind of uh, knowledge distribution, knowledge acquisition, knowledge that going to take a tech companies has started coming with. So leadership has to be clearly aware what is likely to take things in the future. How things go. May not be exactly okay, what one is predicting. The trajectory yeah. should be known to the way. And what role you should play. When I said that uh, flipped classroom, which people are talking earlier, flipped classroom, they're doing something. Yeah, this flipped classroom could be also that people work at home, and people study at home, and then come to the school, college for the purpose of analyzing, discussing, formatting ideas, etc. So the changes would be. Innovation would become very important. Innovation role as well. China has spent a lot of money on two or eight years and very strongly they are working on innovation, research, and then concrete to abstract. We have I started a school long back, concrete to abstract. But that so these are changes which will come. Innovations are going to critical thinking and the adaptiveness and changes which are going to and you have to prepare our future young students so they are adopting to the changes which are coming. They are adopting the ability to assess things and correctly and they are innovative. I have been requesting almost all colleges and universities long back, you set up a research club in your research club means study the real life problem and then you understand this thing. It is going to multidisciplinary oriented, let's say policy talks are multidisciplinary oriented. All problems of society and the individual are not single discipline. So breaking the silos is being talked about it. It's basically kind of changes which are likely to take place in the society in course of time, where the student can learn from any sort and trying to solve and bring out a real life situation and they would come to college for experimentation or ex experience sharing for solving the problem and the critical and analytical. So this change is going to and leader has to respond to these coming changes in a in a more effective manner or possible manner. There will be several limitations and there are certain aspects which I given this the, the PPT which you had seen on the uh, LMS was almost a five years back, but the changes have come very fast. What I suggest is the fast changes have come. And therefore certain abilities of uh, of leader which require to be reflected on are I also mentioned the, that these are ten top uh, uh, the uh, the aspects of the leadership and you prioritize them of where do you place because these are going to measure. One side is that you have learned the theory, etc. Other side is uh, what are the basic things about it. Now it's a new challenge which is coming, uh, challenge of breaking the silos, breaking the uh, classroom situation in course of time and making classroom uh, working, uh, the education at home, self-learning and then experimentation, problem solving create the situation. Many of the countries have started, and you say Singapore has changed from the third generation model of education to fourth generation model. Now we'll start, how do we go about fourth generation model? Fourth industrial development type of model of education, and then you will come to fifth generation. So these are a few aspects of it. I'll share with you what is the higher education thing which will take with effective learning, experiential learning, from concrete personal problem solving, to come to the kind of a solutions of the issue yeah, because this issue and the learning would not be a physical uh, the using uh, kind of 
and more of a liberal arts kind of way, the adaptive learning and going to change that, you are able to, not fixity of this. All engineering fixity might undergo a major change because certain things would be taken care by the cognitive ability which the machines have been given, AR, uh, uh, AR uh, and XR realities are being given to them. So, some neural network is helping them to carry out large scale problems, 3D printing, all those things are there. Uh, uh, financial systems are there, etc. But now, other things will be there. How to change, how to adopt to the situation, etc. That will become more important. And I think, I thought I should share with you. Fourth industrial revolution is a major challenge not only to uh, production and distribution system in the world, uh, in the science and technology development, but also to the system of higher education and the society. That has to be uh, taken note of and try to, leadership has to take note. Awareness is the first and foremost thing. And the responding to the real situation would look and some of the part is being taken by the policy that make the silos, avoid this thing, try to take the problem solving ability to the field and you would find that last other day when we were discussing with the, uh, the chairman of the were talking with them, they said we are going to implement the uh, what we call this we I did it 20 years back uh, that uh, qualification, national qualification framework which are basically oriented toward making the system flexible, making the system problem solving, critical thinking, there are some parameters on which the outcomes of uh, learning has to be assessed. That kind of thing is going to take place in the future. These are thoughts which I thought I'll share with you, and I think now I should stop and allow you to ask questions and freely, frankly, questions you can raise. Thank you very much, Dr. Sharma, giving me an opportunity for speaking uh, out my mind. Okay, sir, any questions, friends? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for the inspiring presentation. Actually, I am really motivated uh, because you said that streaming, streaming will be the order of the day tomorrow. All knowledge will be streamed. So my answer, my concern or my expectation is that if streaming of knowledge will take place that much, then will knowledge be a free good then? Yes. It will be a free good. It will be a free it's, it's, good. It's, it's a free good. It's not only knowledge. Many things would become uh -huh. a free good. Many things. Unless they, they are uh -huh. systematically owned by just like by patents, etc. that has happened uh -huh. in the past. But now you uh -huh. find that it is breaking. The people are seeing uh -huh. the, uh, a book. I'll send it to you. That is open source uh -huh. book. Uh, on the fourth and okay. uh -huh. So you would find that it's breaking. But at the same time, application has to be contextual. Application of yeah. the ideas, etc. That ability has to be created by the education system. You get the information, you get the applying aspect. Uh, other day somebody asked me, I said, uh, MIT is not teaching how to calculate. Oh. MIT is not teaching how to... They say, how, how to use this calculation? How to take decision on this calculation? How uh, uh, method? So it's a brain job or the leadership job to train the student to decision making train the student to applying the knowledge, train the student to collaboratively thinking, because problems are not individual, etc. So that is why you find this is going to be a major responsibility for the system of higher education and the leadership particularly. Those who are not able to see it, as, as uh, uh, Manoj was talking, that why few people only become a leader. <laughs> One of the thing is that if you don't lead, if you don't see things, if you don't see perceive, then you remain and then you are pushed. The COVID has pushed everybody to talk in this way. Then technology pushes you. Now technology, uh, I think when I started that leadership program in the 2013 or that time the technology was that I sent the mess, uh, material through the internet. <laughs> through the, <laughs> but now technology that I can talk to you and you are just on the face of it. So yeah. you find that as a course of time and uh, one day I told uh, uh, somebody, the the the, 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 the that he is, as we are talking, he can create a virtual reality where we are sitting in a conference room oh. and talking to each other in a, as almost a physical manner. So that's kind of oh. system is going to do. And that is developing the As you said, free. Knowledge which was controlled, which was system will become free. Because energy is going to become free. 
If solar energy system already taking place, they are going to. So uh, earlier it was from mechanical, so the physical source of energy to mechanical source of energy from the solar, the renewable source of energy, the cost of production, distribution, and other things would going to go. So it becomes free. That's why abundance. Still, there will be some kind of limitations, but that limitation can be overcome because I know the northeast. If you find the Vivan is sitting, some electricity is not there. Sometimes, this, but solar energy system will enable you to get there. And there's uh, nav ICS and the navigation, inter, uh, internet, cons uh, internet constellation, uh, Indian uh, the constellation is going to be uh, Google or mapping the earth in four or five times. So that flow of uh, information will be unrestricted to any part of the country, any part of the world, and that's going to be the change. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Please feel free. Dr. Vivan? Uh, sir, I have no questions. You have no questions? No. Do you think this is going to be a possibility or I have a question to you? I think now now it's a possibility when we talk about an, uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah. That's why in our college what we have done now is we have started what they call a club. Right? Uh, AI club where we are encouraging our students to be able to come out with uh, uh, their own creativity, especially in artificial intelligence. Um, yeah. We are also trying to teach them, for example, the uh, Python app, etc. Because I think from there they could develop themselves into creating some AI things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I think very soon we will, uh, now the world is heading towards that. And yeah. the computer that we are learning today will not be maybe <laughs> Are relevant in another four or five years. Yeah. And I, I, I really like what you said, you know, we are not teaching our students uh, for what will happen uh, or the jobs that will, you no, know, what we are teaching them now, the syllabus may not be relevant and the jobs may not be there in another five, six years. So we need to move towards AI so that um, we are able to put the students, especially in, in, in a better prospect. So as, as you said, it's very true. We are working towards that. Okay. Manoj, would you like to yes, say sir. something? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. The thing practically, I am uh, astonished or rather surprised to imagine the coming days, what will happen uh, within few years with the use of AI, AR, VR, MR, XR, etc. And uh, what will be the role of the teachers or the uh, higher education system, what is going to be uh, happen with the uh, introduction of such kind of technologies in the education system. So, uh, this is surprising as well as this will obviously benefit our next uh, generation or coming generation. But the, at present days, we have to go through the use of AI or use of technologies as far as possible as the uh, present situation is concerned and uh, the question is if the everything is taken up, taken up by AI or the technologies then what will be the role of human beings in the society that is a big question and that's a very good question you asked I think this is beyond uh, uh, beyond earlier you know uh, we were doing the all manually doing many things physical energy and then that was taken over by the uh, steam then it was taken by electricity many things changed so so still human being started doing something more then they started doing something on the uh, electronic then started doing something more so might well it is not human uh, man would always or the human being will always go ahead this technology will help you reducing the drudgery drudgery means painful work of various kind and so human being is going to always surpass the, that's why I say, technology should be subject to human needs, not the human greed. And technology should enable the uh, development in a manner that new economic models have to come forward and therefore, but the human beings are always going to surpass, uh, bend, is always, as I say, brain advances, thinking advances. You see these are, these me mechanical or manual or, uh, you know, what cognitive role 
which is a lower order balloon is taken by high order balloon which is called in balloon technology fourth generation or fourth level of education has to come forward that is applying the knowledge innovation critical analytical thinking and other thing creating from new soldier uh, they are already started working on solving the problem of uh, various levels of people that the, so the brain is again used for a higher order of development higher order thinking is better how to live happily becomes a very another aspect of the thing so these are the development which will take place in the future dr bawre thank you any sir question okay thank you any question mobile one yes 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 sir yes, uh, i am a uh, one one very specific question sir yeah misuse of misuse of technology against human ethics and values yeah misuse of technology yeah in the coming days yeah that is what i said adversarial adversarial uh, uh, adversarial that neural network are going to make fake things they are going to take you to new uh, their end that adversarial uh, neural network would be there that possibility there you have to guard yourself from that kind of a possibility and that one as well that is where the intelligence would lie in terms of understanding what kind of and that's the mind uh, use of mind for that purpose so how to avoid this adversarial neural network faking everything faking even your voice faking in your behavior faking your photo like uh, many thing and saying that you are like that so that was one has to guard oneself and that education has to be really given to our people for that purpose so that's why this is a, a major challenge for education processes that faking would take place the this um, uh, uh, cyber cyber security which we are talking ai security will become very important issue in future in fact there is one uh, one per story they have made a person is making people to completely as if he is real and all fake one so many things become adversarial but one has to guard against this adversarial neural network but there is a positive side of or also it that has to be taken note of rahul ji do you have any question no sir thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts and uh, this is very very kind of um, interesting uh, i just wanted to kind of uh, add one thing that uh, whenever a new technology comes so there is kind of a fear in the minds of people that uh, what will happen to us so like when computers came first uh, so people were wondering like uh, what will happen to their jobs and uh, if computers will do all the things so uh, and now we are seeing that uh, computers have helped in uh, improving productivity and kind of a lot of new job opportunities and a lot of new learning so uh, i guess we are in a transition phase as far as this uh, as you said like fourth generation uh, fourth revolution taking place and uh, uh, new technology is evolving so so as we kind of uh, see more development in this area so mm-hmm. people will get a better clarity and uh, how it is kind of shaping up their lives and uh, what new opportunity it brings in would be there so i think that's the kind of a situation which we are going to and i hope the man would always man is human being is always surpass what development has taken place and they would try to do something new and new other thing and here education process have to take a lead otherwise digital divide which we have been talking although it will get reduced in technologically but in terms of knowledge and in terms of doing thing it would require a lot of work to be done at various level as it will education institutions level therefore one should be ready for the future changes in the education processes in development of knowledge the use of knowledge and change of uh, several things which are required to be taken note with this availability of technology it is definitely going to reduce the digital divide technologically but the intellectual data and other thing that input has to come from the respect to context context situation and that knowledge should be made available to all the people in the world etc that's what is becoming innovations therefore become creativity become will become a hallmark of this interdisciplinary become will become a part and parcel of working and multidisciplinary orientation will become very and it's a collaborative process of development thinking and other thing would become very key 
and there has to be certain kind of a, a good way of living together and de developing together for the well-being of mankind. That is the challenge which our business is facing. Really Thank you very much for giving me a chance to share my thought. If there are no questions, we already exceeded today time to 9.30, Dr. Sarma. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, Rahul ji, thank you so much uh, for staying with us and uh, sharing your knowledge. And uh, good night, uh, friends, uh, for making it a live session, interactive. You, you, means through your cooperation, this session becomes more fruitful. So thank you. Thank you, sir. everyone. And thank uh, you. take care and see you thank in the next session. Okay, bye. Next module will start on 2nd October today they are tomorrow they are going to put the learning module on the uh, LMS that will end. I would request all of you should go through the material already made available in the uh, on the LMS and as well as the uh, discussion which had has already put on the LMS and so you go through and then prepare a portfolio. I have written to all of you that prepare a portfolio of your learning, take the things learning and prepare it because that portfolio will become source of your uh, that how much you gather, how much you learn and give your opinion, give your viewpoint etc. So now portfolio by 6th of October, uh, you should be ready with the portfolio for your learning on uh, one year, one month learning on the uh, leadership and it is not only learning and imbibing, also transferring the knowledge. This knowledge, you have a double role to play. One is using it for the purpose of development, your know, institution, etc. That is transferring the knowledge which you have gathered to other people. These are two major roles of the teachers and etc. So develop the portfolio and Dr. Sharma is already watching how many of people are looking into the LMS material, how many people have searched it, what etc. When you are developing portfolio, we'll know about it, how it is being, being done and that's all. So I would suggest you to go through it and develop the portfolio and then the sixth we are in the next module we have luckily very good people to come the person who has prepared drafted the UGC development plan is going to speak to you and other two persons who were part of that uh, institution development they are also going to speak to you and I'll also speak to on the, uh, the uh, this uh, planning and other people will be joining so this is going to be very interesting uh, module for the planning, whatever vision you have, whatever ideas you gather, whatever leadership role you are going, how we are going to implement that becomes a planning process. So next module is going to start from 2nd October. Dr. Sharma is going to put the material on today or tomorrow morning that you can have access to it. That's going to be the future. And maybe we'll have some time to interact on the, other than the subject matter, how are we going about it uh, in, the, uh, in the process of our and LMS, you must see it in case if you have any difficulty, approach Dr. Ravishan Sarma, Dr. Sarma, he is going to help you or just in Kenya and see what are the assignments are given, what are discussion points. Dr. Usman has put certain ideas on this discussion point, etc. All of you should put your views on discussion point or the assignment aspect. So I request you to kindly browse through the LMS uh, with regard to uh, with regard to leadership and then make your portfolio and then be ready for the next module on planning which the, they are going to upload it today or tomorrow morning. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Bye, bye everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.